Hey folks, here at OS Reviews, you're watching our video first look and a quick review of the BlackBerry Curve 9310. This is a classic BlackBerry, but also a low-end, budget-oriented model that sells for only $50 on prepaid carriers such as Boost Mobile or Net10. Otherwise, the design makes it seem a lot more dated than it really is. In fact, it's not that old of a BlackBerry device. Um, it's really a budget, again, model that's meant to compete with other low-end and prepaid handsets, and it features everything we've come to expect from a BlackBerry with its infamous keyboard that's tactile and responsive to the fact that it has BlackBerry Messenger for instant communication. And it also is a decent multimedia device now with the camera as well as the headphone port on the top. So we'll discuss some of those elements later on. Otherwise, we would take a quick look at what's included. Basically, you just get the power brick, which is the charger and a micro USB cable. And that's basically it. It charges up in under two hours and since this particular phone doesn't have a touchscreen display um, and really doesn't have that powerful of a processor either. You can last for about three days before you need to recharge it again. So that's one of the benefits compared to an Android phone or especially a tablet that drains power a lot more quickly. So taking a look at the design of 9310 first, again, arguably it's a bit more boring than uh, the most up-to-date Blackberries that we see, those touchscreen devices. And that's because, again, it's more of a budget device that's meant to be consumer friendly and it uses polycarbonates as well as soft touch rubber materials in lieu of aluminum or more expensive glass materials. So the Frontier features access to the display, pretty typical 2.4 inches. It's uh, fairly bright and vibrant, although the view angles aren't so great. The very top here features what looks like a front-facing camera, but unfortunately it's just an ambient light sensor. And there's a earpiece down below here, the famous optical trackpad, which is very responsive and easy to use. And we have hardware keys, physical keys for talk and end, which dubs as the power key, as well as bring up the BlackBerry menu and a back key. The sides features these rubber bumps for the volume rockers on and the inside here, the center here dubs as a media control play pause key. So if you're listening to music, you can tap on there to pause your music for a second. The sides here also features access to a quick launch key for the camera. You can tap on and hold on that for a few seconds to bring up the camera interface and it's pretty quick to capture images. Uh, despite the fact that it only has a 3.1 megapixel sensor, it's autofocus enabled and also features an LED flash and there's GPS on board for geotagging. So better than we expected for a budget phone, I will say, just looking at the megapixel count alone. Of course, there's also Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on board, but you're capped at 3G connectivity, so no 4G, unfortunately. But really, it's meant for corporate and business users as well who want a great uh, productivity tool when on the go as opposed to really entertainment-centric. And that's been the thread with Blackberries over the years. The bottom features access to a loudspeaker, which is indeed very loud. There is a microphone. The other side features access to the micro USB charging port, and there's also a BlackBerry mobile key that's built right on in. So you can tap on this once to very easily launch the BlackBerry mobile uh, interface to quickly communicate with friends and family. You'll see that the trackpad here also features kinetic scrolling, so you can scroll really quickly to jump to the top and the bottom pages without having to go very slowly like an optical mouse in the first generation models of uh, these optical pads that we saw from BlackBerry many years ago. So it's improved from the software perspective. The top features a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a dedicated lock switch, which has a very convenient placement. It's easy to tap on and to press, and you tap on this once to unlock the phone, but for turning the phone on or off completely, you still use the dedicated power switch on the side. Otherwise, behind the battery door, we have access to a fairly large capacity battery. You can see it's the JS1, and it features, if we kind of pop it off here, you can see a 1415 milliamp hour capacity. So again, it helps with uh, continuing a very strong battery life. Underneath here, you also have access to a micro SD card slot for expanding the internal memory if you want to install more games, apps, and video content. And the soft touch material, again, makes it very easy to grip. So what is new about the 9310 is it's kind of its shape and bezels on the sides here. You can see it's made out of plastic, but it's slightly curved a bit more elegantly and melts into your hands. It really reminds us of a typical or low-end Android phone, maybe with a 3.5 or 4-inch display. But instead of having a display in the center here, you have a keyboard, a BlackBerry keyboard. So uh, they kind of modernize the design in a sense. Uh, to kind of fit this 2015-2017 uh, segment uh, for users out there. Otherwise, it's still running on BlackBerry mobile version 7.1, so it's kind of outdated by today's standards, but you still have all the 
features and apps that you would really want if you are a BlackBerry user. Again, that includes Messenger. That's, that includes access to default apps for YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. There's the infamous BlackBerry games such as Brick Breaker and Word Mole that I can show you in a second that comes pre-included. Um, there's access to the BlackBerry browser, which is not the most powerful thing in the world, but it still renders pages fairly well um, for quick news and some quick weather updates, for instance. You do have access to a mobile version of Word and Excel and PowerPoint on board, so you can edit and create new documents when on the go, which is, again, great for corporate and enterprise users. And again, the keyboard itself, which is uh, one of the selling points of all Blackberries, is as usual, excellent. It's also backlit, so you can see it in darker environments. It's a domed keyboard, which is split on the center, and the keys are extremely tactile, responsive, and easy to press, even by feel. Great even if you have larger hands, you can get used to it pretty quickly. Uh, one thing I will say, though, is that it is a slight uh, difference from older BlackBerry curves. So if you were, uh, you know, use an older BlackBerry, um, this one doesn't have as much of a difference in the depth, so everything is at this one level, whereas um, the curvature of older BlackBerry seem to be a bit more extreme, so if you're typing, it felt a little bit more ergonomic, but overall not too bad, and again, the keyboard here is still ex extremely easy to use. So taking a look at this interface again as a bit of a refresher, I guess, to BlackBerry 7.1, the top here features this drop-down notification drawer where you can turn on cellular networks, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, set an alarm clock, and go through settings to change things such as wallpapers. Um, and at, over here, there is a universal search key. You can also access this by typing anywhere on the keyboard to bring up virtually anything, including apps such as like in Slack or radio, the music store, or you can directly search the web as well. Um, and over here, you can change profiles such as ringtones, as well as look at your new notifications if you had any. Down below here, you had your applications, which were tabbed between all, favorites, media, downloads, and frequent. If you want to tap again on this, it brings up the full list of icons that I can then scroll through. One of the more interesting omissions, I would say, of BlackBerry 7.1 is it doesn't seem to actually show all of your applications, despite the name all as the drawer. So an example would be, you can see that the Office viewer isn't included as an icon here, but clearly, if you searched up the feature, you'll see that Documents to Go is an app that's pre-installed. Same thing with uh, BlackBerry Maps and MemoPad. But not all of these apps will show up by default in the All drawer, which is kind of interesting. But regardless, again, you have access to your infamous features such as text messaging. You can access your BlackBerry Messenger again, phone, so dialing. You can just directly tap on the keys on the sides here to make a phone call fairly easily and search up your contacts if you want to. And there's also access to, again, basic utilities such as an alarm clock, which offers a pretty clean and elegant UI. You can do some multitasking on here as well. Um, and again, there's App World for downloading more content. The browser, same thing with uh, additional applications that you can tap on there for taking a look at those. So this includes the subfolder, which it has documents to go, for instance. And if we look at documents to go, you can see that I made a very sample PowerPoint. And if I wanted to look at how the options, you can see I can swipe very easily using this trackpad and look at the details as I work while on the go. So it works fairly well. There's also a few gestures that BlackBerry has built on in here. So you can tap on Alt and then swipe up and down on the trackpad to zoom in and out of images. So it really resembles more of a touchscreen experience rather than just a mouse, which uh, you had on the early Blackberries. Password Keeper, you can also have a BlackBerry Protect. So for more corporate users, you can do voice memos and voice notes. You can also do quick memos, um, basic text memos, and again, shortcuts for Twitter, Facebook, YouTube can be found on here for games. The famous Brick Breaker can be found on here as well. And it's pretty easy to play, again, just using this to waste a little bit more time. You can always download more games as well through the BlackBerry store, even though you know, a BlackBerry really isn't meant or designed for gaming exclusively, but uh, it works, and it works pretty well. So anyways, I guess that's basically all the main apps that you have on the 9110. Um, everything else is pretty much expected. They kept the internals very similar with even older BlackBerry curves, which is to say the processor is a little sluggish by today's standards, unfortunately. Even compared with a modern Android phone, it's going to take a few seconds longer to completely render a web page. So it's definitely not meant for people who browse the web constantly 24-7, but really meant for sometimes, you know, if you want to check something quickly using Wi-Fi, it's possible. Um, otherwise, it is very elegant, and the overall you know, user interface is actually surprisingly refined and easy to use. The camera 
as aforementioned, also works very well. And you can change settings, resolution, you can record video files. Here's a few sample images that I took, for instance. I can press on Alt to kind of zoom on in and kind of scroll and pan around with the trackpad you can see. And surprisingly, for a very low megapixel count, the quality of the pictures are actually pretty decent. Um, so overall, a very good, I would say, budget-oriented BlackBerry if you're not looking for something that's super powerful in terms of gaming as well as for browsing the web with the fastest processor, you will be still satisfied. Under media, you have access to things such as Slacker Radio, which is internet radio service. And there's also a music store on board. You can find podcasts, sample videos, and there's also an FM radio that uses the headphones as the antenna. So you can then scan and save your favorite channels directly on board. In terms of music, there is one sample of songs on here. It shows off, you know, kind of the cover art as well. The speaker itself is very, very loud. And actually does a surprisingly good job since it's mounted on the side here as opposed to on the back so it doesn't get blocked quite as easily. It's not a stereo speaker but uh, it, again it is quite loud. You can search by artist name as well as by title and track and it's a pretty clean UI experience. Images, if we want to just look at also some of the wallpapers you have on board, you can see this is what the experience is like. You can very easily scroll through your images and kind of shows off the capabilities of the display as well. Not the most pixel dense, but uh, good enough again for basic viewing. So pretty good experience overall. And again, there is videos. There is one sample video clip that is included that shows off the capabilities of the interface. Again, I can pause this by tapping on the pause key in the center there. I can change the volume by tapping up and down and everything is just very easy to use. The same elegance is transferred over to the web browser where you can very easily go through your favorite tabs and you can see multitasking between your tabs is also very easy. Just swipe between it and if you want to close up a tab, just swipe down to the X and you're done. So everything is super easy to use. It's really meant for people who text a lot, who do a ton of emailing, uh, text communications, um, as well as you know a pretty decent multimedia option as well with uh, the camera as well as the ability to expand the memory on here. Not meant for people who again browse the web or download too many apps however. So anyways that's been kind of our review of the BlackBerry Curve 9310. Definitely one of the least expensive Blackberries that was released. Uh, not one of the most exciting ones but uh, it was something that was accessible and tried to bring it to the mainstream in a prepaid option but still had all the features that we loved from the classic blackberry it did lack a touchscreen display but uh, everything else was present and again the keyboard here is the star of the show and remains as excellent as always so thanks for watching this review here at os reviews this has been the blackberry curve 93